<laughs> I owned Raw Noise Entertainment, which did I did booking, promotions, and management, and I actually won uh, the Payne County Line Award out of Stillwater, Oklahoma in 2007. Uh, before that, in 2006, I met Michael Fitch, who's now with the Bryce and Percy Band out of North Texas. And at the time he was in Tahlequah, Oklahoma with Backwater, he was their drummer and he also did their booking. And he kind of taught me the meat and potatoes, if you will, of booking and how to develop the mentality of being able to get things done and not taking no for an answer and being able to really work with a lot of venue owners. And so I owe a lot of what I do now even to him. Now I'm working with Nomad Entertainment Group, which is, was started by Damon McBee who is the bass player, or he was the bass player for Jackson Taylor and the Sinners, and he currently plays a lot of shows with James Land, who we're mainly booking for right now. We are also booking for Chris Weiss and a couple other people. favorite types of venues to work with are definitely ones that are more work with you more on a personable level you know they understand the music and they understand the art and, and what goes into it one of my favorite places was the snorty horse saloon it was owned by steve green and he actually had a a loft upstairs where he would let the artists stay and since it was about an hour and a half to two hours from where i was from he would actually let me stay up there on occasion and right now, I would say one of my favorite places would be Crazy Town in Joplin, Missouri. Um, I love working with Maddie B. He's pretty cool. I just really love working with venues that are more personable and, and really appreciate what we do. The, the Snorting Horse was special because it it was kind of started in the spirit of, of you know Red Dirt uh, music. Um, I think Steve Green, the guy that started it would often say he, he started a bar because he wanted to be able to go watch Jason Bowman play. Uh, the Snorty Horse is ground zero for um, the just live music scene sort of in the in the this part of the country I guess you'd say um, and it it really exposed a lot of people to some new stuff and it really did a whole lot to light some fires and, and to um, I don't know, just sort of give an avenue for, for people who love music but didn't necessarily love the music they were getting or, or maybe they liked it but wanted to go see it live or, or something like that. So that that's what the Snorty Horse did, it's just a point of access. It was really, really ground zero. And, and, venue, and venue owners and, and management like that go two ways. They're either the best people in the world to you and you love them to death or they're total pieces. I've never met an in, an in the middle. Alright, I want to go back to the, back to the whole thing about the booking agents though, and play devil's advocate for a second. Because what about the what about the fans? Like, start out as fans, but they're actually booking it, like myself and like Billy James. Yeah, I think that's awesome. I think it's great. I think that's what it's at. I think that right there. Is what it's all about. And there's radio which helps bring Red Dirt music to the masses through everything from individual shows to whole stations. QD, uh, 106.9 The Ranch, uh, did the morning show called The Morning Revolution with uh, Jim Nash. Why is the format completely Red Dirt? I know there's not very many radio stations that are completely Red Dirt Texas country. Uh, well, the scene is big enough and strong enough uh, to support that. I mean, the diversity is there, the diversity of the listeners are there. I mean, it's just and it's what people around here like. We're doing what we want to do, not what some national executive said we should be doing. We're, you know, you're crazy if you don't do this. We're crazy enough to do it. Uh, we do the Red Dirt Radio Hour, and it's been running for nine years. Uh, KVOO 98.5 FM Tulsa. And it streams worldwide at kvoo.com. Uh, it's at 9 p.m. on Sunday nights. We play uh, music by our friends that we've met through the years. We do telephone interviews. We have in-studio guests. The reason we even started the show, Brad and I were just bitching and moaning about the state of radio, how bad it was. It's like, you know, we're going to do something about it. We have a friend that worked at KBOO. He said, look, we set us up an interview with the program director. We want to pitch an idea. So we walked in and pitched the idea, and like two minutes in, he said, okay, I'm gonna give you your show. And then we just kept pitching him the show. And he said, wait a minute, did you not hear me? I said, you, know, you can quit pitching, you're gonna get your show. 
and that's the way it went for nine years. Well, I'm a DJ on Sunday afternoons from noon to six on KKOW 96.9 The Cap. And I also am a DJ and uh, program director for Gorilla Radio, Pitt State's only student-run radio station. And it's also online, so we have people that listen from all across the country. While I'm on um, KKOW, I I do have to play some Nashville country, but I also get to throw in a little bit of Red Dirt here and there, and we get a lot of requests for Red Dirt, which is always great. Also, what's great about that is you go to these shows and people actually recognize you from the radio. I don't know how they do because you're on the radio, you're not on TV, but I guess maybe it's because we have our bios and our pictures on the website and they just tune in that much. And it is great that people do get to do tune in to your show and, and it's great that they tune in and request, you know, Red Dirt or Texas Country or whatever you want to call it from these artists that, you know, I truly believe in their music. And so I feel like I'm being able to help them in a way through that. And then with my Gorilla Radio show, um, it, I have a show called The Dirty South Show, and it's all uh, southern, um, southern music, anything from Zydeco to bluegrass to red dirt in Texas country. And we play probably, I'd say probably primarily uh, red dirt and Texas country with a little bit of other stuff thrown in. And then I actually just got hired as a ranch hand at uh, the ranch down in Corsicana, Texas. I will give Jen this. Jen has been probably more of my shows than anybody. That's because I like managed you. I've been to more of your shows than your freaking band has been to your shows. <laughs> Played us on the radio more than anybody ever played us on the radio. Uh, I thank you very much. Jim does a good job. She, she does. She, she plays she you on the radio a lot. If she likes you, she will play. Um, let's do a uh, ride. Independent recording is often popular with Red Dirt artists. One band that does this is Hammerdown, who's been recording at a home studio owned by their guitar player, Noah Eifert, and his dad. Record on reel-to-reel, -reel, and then cassette tape, and of course when I got here I said we need to bring in digital stuff. So we still record on like all the reel-to-reel -reel stuff and all that kind of stuff we need to, the song fits. Um, it's like a 20-year-old studio, of course the house is, it's not like the most sound studio in the world. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell. But the studio is, it's so full. It's fun. You know, you walk across the floor, you get a sound. You, you put your mic over there, you get a sound. <laughs> get all kinds of sounds. We, uh, do everything here from our own personal stuff to, of course, I've been playing with these guys now, Hammer Down and Miles and the rest of the guys, so. Let's do it again. I think we can get better. Get all this shit done. We can get it better. We, I want it to sound like that. Can I, well, you want me to just uh, record I mean, the click track? I can record a click track and just put it on there for you. It's like a damn robot. <laughs> all right. You ready? Can you get a better tone on? Like, I've done some stuff in, like, studios and stuff like that but I was always like why why pay somebody a thousand dollars whenever this only costs a thousand dollars and I can use it for the rest of my life you yeah, know exactly yeah, I learned it's all about books well reading those people that are into it for the record labels mm -hmm. they get paid first and then the band gets mm -hmm. divided up the scraps afterwards exactly so the way I look at it is, why not do it your own? You get to know, you know what you want to sound like. You know what the song's supposed to sound like that you wrote. So, why the hell not do it until you get it the way you want it? Why Red Dirt Bands? You know, it's a, it's, it, it's a real type of music. Uh, it's not something where it's on the radio all the time. You get to hear it when you're in Texas. But it's something that people can actually relate to. Like me, I can relate to that type of music. I'm from Texas. So I, I can relate to that kind of music. And I, and I see a lot of people as we have these bands that are doing the same thing that I do. You know, if you were going to a honky-tonk in Texas, you're going to hear these kind of bands. Uh, it's like Stoney LaRue actually explained it to me. It's kind of a mix between country and classic rock. It's a bridge. It's a gap. So that was pretty cool, you know, to hear it from somebody who's been doing it as long as he has to kind of explain what Red Dirt is. And I, it's been successful, I think, and continues to be successful. 
because of the type of music it is. It's so blue collar. It's not, you know, it's not Nashville country, so it's not the white collar stuff that people can, you know, they expect to hear when they turn on the radio or expect to hear when they go to a country bar. Um, it's the whiskey and beer when you talk, you know, you see these acts and uh, it's phenomenal because they like, it's, you can guarantee when one of these bands, when the Red Dirt bands are here, number one, it's going to be really, usually be a really good crowd. They're going to be really polite because they're a lot of country folks, but at the same time, they're, they're good drinkers too. I mean, you know, it's, then from a nightclub owner's standpoint, you like to always see a good drinking crowd and they do, they have a good time while they're here. It's not about the coming in and getting in a fight, it's coming in here and some great music and getting to have a good time with the, you know, and the band, a lot of times the band comes back in and parties with us, so, you know, it's, it's an incredible feeling. Shit's gonna get broken up. What are some of the craziest things that have happened during one of the shows here? Well, there's a lot of them. Um, well, I'd, I'd probably say I'd have to hand the craziest probably to Jackson Taylor. Um, Jackson likes to uh, have a lot of fun. Uh, nothing wrong with that either. But, um, you know, uh, it's like when he, when Brandon Burke, his drummer, was back playing the drums, and they were on the back. Jack walks back and pours a bottle of beer onto his drum set, and then every all of a sudden, Brandon starts hitting the drums, and it's flying everywhere. I mean, it's craziness. Uh, that was probably one of the most, you know, one of the most craziest things that we've had happen as far as that goes. Now, getting drunk and going on the bus with the guys and hanging out, you know, that's a whole other story.